Okay. I'm, uh, I'm Zelfix. I'm a, uh, I'm a dual certified uh, Linux administrator. And um, I've been studying Linux for about nine years now. Um, I have a few different projects. If you go to like uh, my Twitter, I just started doing like cheat sheets where I've been posting stuff like that. And uh, I also have, uh, I do like video tutorials and stuff like that on YouTube and uh, archive.org as well. Um, frequent uh, site to send and stuff like that. So, um, I always like to start with fire jail. With, uh, a, lot of my, a lot of my talks just because it's so uh, fundamental in everything I do with, around Linux. Uh, just because it's uh, the greatest utility I've found for um, just being able to do almost anything you can think of. You can start, uh, you can start things in their like, own mount namespace. You can uh, put things in their own VLAN interface. You can, um, you can segment them off in their own like, mount namespace. You can uh, blacklist directories or files or whitelist them. Um, it's a pretty fascinating tool. And it's, it's all written in C as well. Um, so so um, I guess the, the first thing when it comes to networking uh, you'd probably want to cover is uh, DNS, just because it's so fundamental. Um, and it's odd to me how there's so much, there's such a lack of security in, uh, in DNS servers. Like DNSSEC should be um, mainstream by now, but for some reason it's not. So um, a few years back, uh, WikiLeaks did, a, uh, did an audit of all the different DNS providers, and they found that there was only one that was actually trustworthy that wasn't spying on it, intercepting with it, or doing some sort of like malicious stuff with it, and that was uh, OpenNIC. So um, definitely check out OpenNIC. And uh, I recently found out this, if I, um, I switched from a good ISP to uh, an, a bad one, and uh, I found that uh, they, they inject their own uh, DNS into your uh, resolve.config file. So they forcefully try to make you take their DNS, um, DNS server, so. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, fire jail is you can force um, all the network traffic, all the DNS traffic to go to uh, a trustworthy provider. So it doesn't leak, it doesn't go to somewhere where you, you, know, you don't know what they're doing with it. Um, so there are the commands to do that. Um, and FireJ also has a, a GUI, so that's what that is in the bottom left there. Um, it's uh, called Fire Tools. So here's some more commands um, with uh, network manager is the is the um, connection um, utility for Linux um, and it has a, a, a CLI and a GUI. Um, here are all, all the different CLI commands for it. Um, so I personally don't trust uh, IPv6 at all. I'll go into that later. But um, on here, I'm you know making sure that it's not you know. IPv6 does something called the auto config, where it forces you to um, ask for um, an IP over IPv6, which I don't trust at all. So um, that's one of the things that uh, I turn off. Um, and uh, RF kills an, another interesting one. Uh, that's for uh, for Wi-Fi. It actually um, turns off the the kernel module for the um, for the wireless, so it literally from like the heart from the hardware up like can't function while RF kill has it uh, disabled. So um, I'm going to go into a couple things about the kernel just because I find it um, so interesting. Um, <laughs> I've done such a, such a such a deep dive on this stuff. So um, these are the the current um, recommendations by the kernel itself. Uh, protection project, um, and this is this is my config right now. Um, so there are a lot of really interesting things about here. Um, there's something called a mod probe, and what it does is it interprets the modules for the kernel. So 
from it to go from like hardware to software and for that to communicate and then from the kernel to communicate with the OS, it needs that, um, that relationship to succeed. Uh, ModProbe has a blacklisting option. So you can blacklist kernels. So um, years ago I heard a talk um, by one of the Tor developers and he said that the, he was in a room with like five other developers and they were all coding and then like all their boxes just shut off. And they're like, what, what just happened? And they went back and they analyzed it and they found that there was a, a, a vulnerability in uh, Apple Talk. And it, they used it to exploit uh, all their computers and it just pulled down a, a kernel dump. So, um, so here's more of that um, using ModProbe to blacklist things. So, like uh, NFS, the network file system, um, IPv6. Um, all those are Bluetooth modules. I mean, there's like 35 Bluetooth modules. I don't know why. So, so I blacklist all those. And another thing I like to uh, uh, utilize is uh, AppArmor. AppArmor is a, uh, a confinement and isolation program. So, back in the old days, they used to do a thing where it's uh, distrust everything and, you know, accept with, you know, policy, right? But it seems like everything's now just accept until you find out it's bad, which seems like in kind of a bad place of mind. So um, AppArmor does this thing where it, it'll, conf it'll not only confine it, the process or the directory, but it'll confine like the, the binary's ability to execute or the binary's ability to see anything else in other directories or um, it to communicate with anything else. So it just says, you can do this here, everything else is blacklisted. So, and then it will, um, it will log if that fails. So here's, a, a, here's an example of the network manager um, uh, profile for AppArmor. So these are all the different profiles. Um, I think there's, I have like 132 profiles right now. So I just did a, a status to find out how many, um, which ones are active. So that read off a whole bunch of different things. So um, to, to get AppArmor to work, and I know this is kind of complex. Um, that's why I gave out my talks. So and my, uh, the PDF for this. So if you ever want to replicate anything here, it's uh, the whole talk's designed to be uh, completely replicable. Uh, you're, Replicable, yeah. So, uh, AppArmor needs uh, the parser to load it, and AppArmor is a, a kernel module, so um, it exists um, in kernel space. So, so there you see it's um, uh, enforce is enforcing it, um, confine is logging it, enforcing it is if it's not supposed to be doing that by policy, it'll force it to. Uh, die. <laughs> It'll kill the signal. So, And then you can use a uh, uh, fire gel to print off um, what that um, process is doing. So like here, um, this is fire gel. I'm using it. Uh, as you can see, I define my own DNS. Um, okay, so open VPN. Um, Two different things. There's um, point to point, and uh, I mean, what's the other called? Um, site to site, yeah. Um, and you never want to use uh, open, v open, open VPN with uh, TCP. Um, you always want to use it with uh, UDP. Um, that was, they discovered that just because of, um, I think the packet size was too big with TCP, and it was causing all kinds of like, uh, load balancing issues and stuff. So I don't know if anyone remembers this. Um, back in 2019, um, like one weekend they said that every VPN was broken. And they said that this exploit worked on every VPN, whether it's like, you know, Cisco, whether it's um, OpenVPN, whether it's every technology was broken by this uh, implementation. And it was uh, quite alarming. <laughs> so I, uh, I looked into it. Uh, further, I stayed up all night, like looking through different um, 
um, RFCs. And uh, before they found, it was probably a couple weeks before they figured out how easy it was to actually fix the issue. But they found that OpenVPN, is, by design, is very secure. It's, it's how it's used. I mean, there's like four different ways that you can add ways of extra authenticating the connection. Um, but it's a lot of times just used as a, uh, the VPN provider just gives you a cert, and then there isn't like that uh, bi-directional communication. Um, you can use a site to site and both exchange like TLS uh, connections, and that, that's safer than um, just a cert. So, and then you can also um, you can also add um, I forget what that's called. You can do, you can define something that's in the cert um, through the the traffic, so that if someone tries to man in the middle it, um, and they're not presenting that um, that fingerprint in there. So, um, yeah, setting this up a site to site, just a person to person, um, nothing in between is really easy. You just exchange a TLS key, and then one person puts zero, and one per puts one in the config, and they connect. So, um, a lot of ways that people will man in the middle OpenVPN is uh, they'll just kill the, kill the connection, and uh, try to continue the connection with the person that doesn't know that it has ended. Um, I've heard stories about people who, uh, they go to like China and stuff like that, and uh, they, uh, they know that the other person on the other end killed the connection, but the connection's still going because someone's trying to man in the middle of the connection, you know, so. All right, so here's another way of uh, using um, system D. Um, so uh, system D will try to um, resolve, or network, network D will try to resolve um, the, the, uh, the DNS, and you don't want that. WireGuard and OpenVPN both do their own um, DNS and uh, traffic. So that'll just make it unstable. So um, first I'm gonna cover uh, MOVAD. Excuse me. So looking at, there's probably hundreds of different VPN providers, but really there's only two that seem trustworthy to me, and that's uh, MOVAD and ProtonVPN. And uh, the thing that really made me interested in them uh, at first was uh, they had something in their, uh, their blog that said, you know, um, privacy is a human right, and they cited um, the UN saying it's a been declared a, you know, human right, and uh, the European Commission, and uh, I think that says a lot. Um, I think most people, I don't know, it's a hard thing to fake. I guess you could fake it, but it just seems very genuine. So, um, and since then, um, I think the European courts have actually lawed um, surveillance and um, against human rights which is interesting. Um, there are a few other resources for activism stuff. So, MoveAI doesn't log, they're open source. Uh, they use WireGuard as well. Um, if you use Android, uh, they use F-Droid, which is an open source repository um, and better implementation than what uh, Google has. Um, and it has a kill switch as well. So. Uh, MOVAD uses both uh, open, open VPN servers and WireGuard servers. So they both use uh, SOC5, and um, so they're gonna have different um, listening interfaces. So when you, uh, when you set something up, um, uh, the WireGuard's gonna use 6.4, and, and OpenVPN is gonna use 8, so. All right, so we're, uh, we're gonna go ahead and download uh, MOVAD, and uh, in, in Linux, you like to uh, check everything against uh, signatures. 
to verify the code um, is trustworthy. So here I'm just grabbing uh, the GPG key from the developer. It's, that's doing it a different way. I'm just doing it through curl. All right, and then I'm, I'm verifying the code. And as you can see, it's uh, trustworthy. Okay, so um, here are the, the specifications for OpenVPN, the highest um, you know, protocols you can use. So so um, they just have a really easy GUI. Um, this is their website, not an actual like, client, um, that you specify um, what you you know, the device, and um, with, Wire, with WireGuard, you can actually set up uh, uh, multi-hop um, tunnels. Um, you can't do that with, uh, with OpenVTN, but, um, so here you specify where you want, um, which server you want to use, and then it'll give you the config, and then you just uh, drop the shirt into a, uh, just drop the shirt into um, your directory there. So I'm just copying those files there. And then, uh, since you don't want the ability for those files to be altered because there are certificates and uh, there's login information and stuff like that, um, you can um, specify them as immutable files. So you can do that so then they're unable to change at that point. All right, so I'm, uh, right here I'm loading the uh, OpenVPN TUN0 interface, which is a uh, Ethernet um, virtual interface, so it isolates um, isolates it from the actual physical interface. So, and here I'm uh, I'm, I'm loading the config. So if you wanted to do it through the uh, the WireGuard or the Op OpenVPN uh, client, the CLI client, you can do that. You, I, I will go over how to do that with Network Manager, but. Um, Mulvad does a really good job here. So, um, so this is the Mulvad client here. Um, you just specify, you know, I want OpenVPN and UDP. You never want to use TCP. And uh, there it shows it's connected. So, like I said, you can use Network Manager. Um, so you just have to import the cert into um, into Network Manager client. So that's what that looks like there. You just do import, and then everything's already configured because uh, the mobile config is already specified. So. so there it's just uh, successfully established. And there's more settings. And there, I'm doing a, a connection check, so doing a, a DNS leak test to see if, um, you know, there's any, anything leaking and uh, seeing if uh, the IP has been blacklisted by anyone or anything like that and everything go, comes back, it's fine. And then you can see all my, uh, all the interface details on the right. All right, and this is Network Manager uh, command line, so I just wanted to show um, what that looks like examining the, the VPN um, profile for that. So uh, when, you, when you set up uh, the, the Firefox, um, you want to set it up as 10.8.0.1, and then you want to proxy through SOX, because um, you want to specify that uh, the, the DNS gets um, um, done through um, OpenVPN. So. All right, so more Firefox details. So that's exactly what it looks like to set that up. All right, so yep, the one on the the one on the right is a uh, WireGuard, and uh, the one on the left is OpenVPN. And um, here I'm uh, setting up a, a kill switch, um, and requiring it to always be on. So when you lose a connection or you turn off the VPN, um, it has IP tables, rules that just um, 
force all the traffic to only be um, MOVAD. Anything else is just a black hole. So. There we go. Um, so there's the wireguard key and everything like that. Um, and this is through uh, Android, so it looks almost the same. And uh, this is a, I don't know if anyone uses Telegram. Uh, Telegram um, setting up a um, SOX5 proxy with Telegram. That's, this one is WireGuard, so. And uh, yeah, you want to choose a uh, trustworthy DNS. So in that one, um, Moved does, um, uh, they do run their own DNS server now, so you can use them or OpenNIC as well. And now I'm uh, doing another connection check to make sure there's no DNS leaking. Um, oops. And yeah, I'm just doing TCP dump just to show you what the beginning of the connection looks like. And those are the IP, IP tables um, rules to uh, specify uh, the kill switch. Um, there's one line in there that says um, if it's this protocol, uh, 53, and it's not this DNS server, uh, drop it. So that was an interesting one in there. Um, interesting rule. So, um, so IB table is a kernel module. It's a, a firewall. Um, so there I'm just loading uh, a few different kernel modules to assist. Um, I'm gonna just do a pretty light, I guess, overview of what IP tables does. Um, so here I'm specifying if a packet comes in and it's invalid, um, drop it and log it. And uh, here I'm specifying if it's WebRTC, just drop it as well and log. And uh, this is, uh, these are all the different kinds of port scans you can do, like with Nmap and stuff like that. Um, and I'll go over that in a second. So those are all the different rules for those. So these are all the different types of like um, port scans that are normally used. So, and uh, that's, what, that's what they are. Um, and that's what they look like. So, um, and these are the rules put up against them to show you um, what that looks like. So, and really all I'm doing here is you're just specifying the TCP flags. So, it does get much more complicated. I don't want to get into like snort and stuff like that where they just take like the hashes or um, or the binary value of like the packets and stuff like that. So um, I think the, the the most important thing about like IP tables is that the default rule is drop. You should only be accepting packets you want. Um, so here's uh, some um, OpenVPN rules uh, specifying the uh, ton uh, interface and then also uh, the virtual interface and also the uh, the protocol accepting them and you want to turn on um, IP forwarding so that it's able to do that all right and I, I found this uh, really interesting rule um, which is the for loop that uh, if you have like a file full of bad IPs um, or good ones, you can whitelist or uh, blacklist source addresses. So, and then that's how you would save the rules and then you can restore them at a later time. And uh, you can convert those into uh, NF table rules and that's what that looks like. All right, um, so IP set is a, uh, is, it's kind of like Snort and stuff like that. It's an IDS in a, in a way. It, uh, you take in known bad signatures and uh, uh, bad IP addresses. And, um, uh, when like malware analyzers found, find um, signatures to these and they upload them to these companies and you can use that to um, do some analysis and uh, 
search for that kind of stuff. So, so this is how you would use uh, IP set. Um, here I'm just uh, enabling all these different rules and it's fetching them. You can see that it downloaded it correctly. And I made this um, uh, so that I don't think it's like a, it's meant to go with um, firewall D or a couple different other implementations. I don't think it was supposed to be used um, with the kernel, the IP tables. So um, I wouldn't exactly recommend this. I would probably recommend going through like firewall D um, just because it's not a kernel module. Um, sometimes it's resolving and uh, a, a lot of files. <laughs> so, um, and it does it on like a, a periodic basis. So here I'm saving that. And then uh, FW snort, which is, it basically takes uh, snort signatures and it converts them into IP tables values. So you can use snort signatures with IP tables. And that's what it's gonna look like. So, all right, and you can save that and then restore those um, at a later date. So, um, can someone give me a water, possibly? So, um, IPv6 is over 20 years old now, and it still has a lot of like known vulnerabilities and like designs in it. And um, there's an old hacker group called uh, THC Hydra um, that designed the IPv6 attack toolkit. And there's like I don't know, 35 different tools that do different things on just uh, breaking the protocol, and it's. Uh, I don't know, its design is very flawed in so many different ways, um, which is why I don't trust it. I just saw how easily they were just beating up IPv6 and using it against people. Um, so, um, so SysCTL is a, a kernel rule writer, policy driven, I guess. Um, it also does a lot of different networking stuff like that. Um, so like the second one there um, prevents sin flooding. Um, there's a few other ones like address, address space randomization. So if someone's trying to hack you and they're trying to get um, uh, the instruction pointer, and when you're uh, randomizing the, the address space, they're not able to um, just take over that the instruction pointer. So, and uh, log, logging and uh, forwarding, no, unless you're gonna use a VPN. Um, so. There's a lot of other ones, but I'm not gonna go further into that. But, um, so IPv6, uh, like I said, I don't trust it. So I'm turning off uh, the auto configuration so it doesn't um, automatically uh, fetch an IPv6 address. And uh, and also disabling it, and it, when it, when you disable it, it disables it actually through the kernel. So IPv6 isn't functional at all. So um, I made a a script here that goes through all the different ways that uh, you could turn on IPv6 through the kernel, and then I just made a file, and you can use systemctl and just load it, and it renders IPv6 unfunctionable. So. All right, and uh, here's uh, using uh, SAX5 on Telegram. Um, you can see the steps. And uh, that's the address that Telegram um, generates. So, and you can use AppArmor with Telegram, um, specifying, um, you know, you can only go into this directory, you can't go into any of the others. Can execute here, but it can't ex execute anywhere else. It's only read here, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's also a fire jail profile for it as well. Uh, just 
similar stuff. Um, let's see, so um, see protocol there. I removed IPv6, so it doesn't have the ability to uh, make IPv6 calls. It also doesn't have the ability to um, pivot around in groups. It doesn't have the ability to um, be root um, or gain shell access um, or gain access to any mount or uh, external disks. And that's the, that's the GUI that shows all the different things that it does. So, and here I'm doing um, more leak testing with uh, Movad. And it has a uh, API. So you can actually do it through the command line if you want. So, and that's through another provider, just dnsleaktest.net. Okay, so this is a, a qubit torrent, so a torrent provider. Um, so they recently came out with like a new, uh, a new version of, I think they're anonymous mode, yeah. So um, definitely the, the most trustworthy torrent provider, I would say, and um, especially combined with Sax5, um, it makes it much more difficult for people to um, track back any of the traffic to you. So, so these are all the different steps. Um, you want to disable, um, uh, let's see, what is it? DHT, DHTs and require that encryption is being done in the traffic. Um, and then you want to specify the SAX5 proxy, 1080. And then if you see at the bottom there, I did a, a, a leak test through the torrent. Uh, browser and it came back um, good. So you can also specify uh, IP filter rules for Qubit Torrent. So and there they're applied. So it's blacklisting IPs for. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's also a, a fire jail profile for um, Qubit Torrent. So. Along the same lines as the other one, it can't get shell access, it can't go into other devices, it doesn't have access to any other directory. So, all right, so this is uh, the WireGuard um, portion. Um, those are all the different specifications for WireGuard. And uh, it's a very, very small amount of code. Um, it was written so well that actually the, the creator of uh, the, the Linux kernel, Linus, um, actually in, um, brought it into the kernel. And he wrote several reviews about how impressed he was, how well written it was. So, um, so this is the WireGuard um, config generator. Um, don't know if I have it here. I don't. Um, so you can also do a, uh, a multi-hop so WireGuard can communicate through WireGuard tunnels. So it goes from you to your VPN provider out into the internet. So you can go from you to your, uh, to your VPN provider and they have you know, different server farms all across the world. And you can have them um, basically multi-hop from different, um, different destinations so that it's almost impossible to um, follow that traffic. And that's how uh, you would uh, set up WireGuard. And you just need to generate the key. And uh, Movad has a really, um, really easy way of setting up WireGuard. Um, they have a script that it runs and uh, it goes out, finds all the servers and it sets up um, that trust with them. So here I'm just um, specifying only root can access that directory. And then I'm starting the service. And then this is, uh, now I'm asking for the interfaces. And you can see the last one there is the Movad interface. So that's the virtual interface. And uh, here I'm showing the, um, the different um, configs for WireGuard. So the interesting, the interesting thing about WireGuard is that it's all centered around um, 
the, the network namespace specification, which is like from the 90s, it's a really old one. Um, but it also uses like cutting edge encryption as well, so. But it's designed to be very easily used. So I'm tearing down the interface, and as you can see, it's turning everything off and resetting all the rules. And here I'm just doing a TCP dump, so you can see how the, the beginning of the uh, transaction occurs, what the traffic looks like. And here I'm doing um, just a leak test, and everything's good. So, and here's, here's how you would generate the multi-app. So, the cool thing there is like you can, you can have the, the entering hop um, to be in a, in a country where, um, like America, where, you know, there, uh, you can get, you know, charges for, you know, digital rights violations. And so you can, you can enter here and then exit in Sweden where it's, there aren't any. So they don't pursue anything like that because uh, they don't see it as a crime. Um, and uh, this is uh, Proton VPN. Proton VPN was really easy, really easy um, to set up. Um, so no, uh, they don't they don't log. Um, like I said, they're, they're the on, these are the only two companies that I would actually really trust um, when it comes to uh, be, being able a VPN provider. So uh, this is how you would get their GPG signatures. Um, so, you know, they're providing me with a binary. I want to trust that binary. So I'm, uh, I'm grabbing their signature and I'm signing against their binary um, to verify that there's integrity with that binary. So I went through and I'm just initiating the Proton VPN PLI. Uh, Proton VPN uses. Um, um, IKE2, uh, which is, the, it gives you a username and password to use with um, the VPN uh, login process. There. As you can see, it set up the, the, pro, the, the Proton kind of interface. So you want to set up a leak protection and then um, enable a kill switch. And as you can see, I'm coming from the Netherlands. And then you just disconnect. So, all right, and these, these last few slides are just uh, um, cheat sheets. Um, so like uh, system admin, stuff like that, to just control processes and stuff like that. So uh, Journal CTL is just a, a logging utility. So these are all the different things you can do with it. Um, um, LSOV um, is a lot of different things. Um, it you know it can it can trace sockets, it can trace processes, it can trace uh, directories. So if something's in a directory doing something but you don't know what's accessing the directory, you can uh, run it against that directory and find out who or what is accessing the directory. These are a few different ways you can uh, um, utilize it. Um, FUser is uh, another interesting one. Um, you can uh, basically specify a directory and anything that's accessing that directory, whether it's the user or process, uh, it kills that, or you can find out who's accessing it. Um, kill um, is misleading. Um, kill just manipulates the different uh, signals. So there are like 15 different signals. Um, the first one is like uh, reload the process. Nine is to um, kill it with uh, impunity. <laughs> so those are all the different signals and what they do and all the different things that, all the different kill commands. Uh, PID specifies the process's ID. So um, you can specify it the user, and it'll give you what processes that user is using. And then strace is a uh, a system call tracing utility. Um, so um, run very, 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 
of obers output. <laughs> so, and then uh, this just trace sockets, uh, gives you sockets, sockets, statistics. So, and that's a TCP jump. Um, and uh, that's it. All right.